Hey guys, Sam here with DLife HD. Today we're going to be talking about a new release on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Stadia. That is Scarlet Nexus. Yep, Scarlet Nexus, the all new title from Bandai Namco. It has an anime style, art style, but it's not your typical turn based RPG. No, it's actually a hack and slash game of sorts, although it does have a lot of RPG elements still worked into it. Well, I got a lot more to say about it, but let's go ahead and roll the intro and then we'll get into the discussion. Alright, so I've had the chance to play Scarlet Nexus. I played it on the Xbox One and I've played it for about 10 hours over the weekend. And I gotta say, I'm really enjoying it so far. I was very hopeful that this game would be a great, great game because unfortunately the Xbox doesn't have a lot of Japanese games on it. And Japanese games are obviously pretty huge with Sony and Nintendo both being Japanese companies. They've gotten better over the years. They've gotten some more releases. We talked in the past about Octopath releasing as well as several of the Final Fantasy games coming to Game Pass. But this is a kind of a huge step. Finally having another Japanese game outside of the RPG genre and outside of Square Enix. So this is kind of a big deal. I mean, yes, it is coming out on PlayStation as well as PC and Stadia, but the fact that it's coming to Xbox feels like the biggest deal to me. Not to mention the fact that this game has been heavily marketed as an Xbox game. Uh, Bandai has struck a deal with Microsoft, obviously, to market this game for the Xbox Series X. And I'm really happy for them. I'm glad that that worked out. So I wanted to give it a shot, support them, see how it went. And yeah, it's a really fun game. So this game, let's talk about the story just to help you understand, like, what kind of world you're going to be stepping into if you decide to play it. It takes place in a, not necessarily the future, but a future where everyone's brain is now being harnessed to its fullest potential and they are able to control things with their brain and see things that were never visible before. And now pretty much everything is done through brains. Everything is connected with brains and you can see a screen, but it's not there for anybody else. It's just being seen by your brain. Now, some people uh, have special abilities that they've harnessed in their brain, and that includes either of the main characters that you pick with the power to use psychokinesis, which lets them just chuck stuff around with their mind. And so these weird monsters have been attacking, and they are just some of the craziest designs I've seen in all of video games. They are uh, just random objects mixed with organic life. Very, uh, It's very H.R. Giger, uh, and who was the designer for uh, the Alien in the Alien films, as well as some other really cool stuff. He just did a lot of crazy artwork, and honestly, all these monsters really remind me of that. So anyway, these monsters have been attacking. You have just joined... A group called the OSF and their mission is to fight the others as the monsters are called so you step into the shoes of one of two characters and yes their stories are separate and you get to choose which one you want to see first you get to step into their shoes and fight with weapons and psychokinesis so you'll be going in with either swords or knives swinging Getting up close and then stepping back and throwing things everywhere from chairs to cars. You can even do these really, really crazy attacks where you'll like pull down stuff in the environment like a wrecking ball or telephone poles. And it's really cool. So the combat, if you've ever played like a Dynasty Warriors game, the combat feels pretty similar where you have your light attacks and your heavy attacks. But there's a lot of new stuff in there that's not in really the Dynasty games where you'll just be throwing yourself back and then swinging something with your mind. You can have something coming with your mind. You can be throwing a huge car. It takes a little bit of a delay, so you can get in there and get a few sword attacks. Then the car will hit. 
and you actually have a limit to how much you can throw things with your mind, so you have to be getting in there and getting sword attacks to refill the meter. So you'll be switching back and forth, learning new combos, and as you play, you'll get experience points, which you can put towards unlocking new abilities. So you have the skill trees, you can slowly unlock abilities, and that way you learn combos and new abilities at a pace that's not overwhelming. Start out with a pretty limited moveset, but even after just 10 hours of playing, the moveset for me has expanded greatly. Uh, one thing I was like, ah, I wish I could double jump, and I went into the menus and I dug around and I saw, oh, there's a place to unlock the double jump, so I started working towards that. Uh, grinding out the skill tree until I could get that. Then I wanted to have, like, air dash, and yep, of course, anything you think would be there is there. There's air dash, you can jump, and then jump again, and then dash. Awesome, and the, so the, the combat gets more and more fluid the more you play, you get more comfortable with it, and you unlock new abilities. Really cool. And the the monsters are so creepy that you just have a great time jumping in there and throwing cars at them. It feels great. But it's not just you. You go with a team. Your team will be changed up as you go on different missions. And each team member has different abilities that they have unlocked with their brain. Some of them have the power of like fire or electricity or they can turn invisible. That kind of thing. And so as you join up with these other team members, you have something called Brain Link, and it's so cool because when you do it, it allows you to briefly summon any of their abilities. So you can summon fire and then have all of your sword attacks be imbued with fire, or you can get invisibility and run up and hide and then do a crazy attack where you just throw a huge object. You don't have to worry about uh, the delay because you're, you're invisible, so no one's going to attack you. Really cool, and you can sometimes even combine multiple abilities where you'll have your psychokinesis plus fire plus invisibility. You can just do these devastating attacks. Now, one of the coolest things in the game is that it is extremely stylish. Every time you do a finisher, the camera will cut away and it will show it in just all of the anime art style and uh, fluidity that you would expect from the way that the game looks. And one of the coolest moves is called a brain crush. And so enemies have a meter that can be worn down, similar to Dynasty Warriors once again. And if you get that meter all the way down, then you have the option to do a really cool move called brain crush, which will just defeat them in one hit. Now, a lot of times you'll actually defeat enemies before you even get their meter down. So on the occasion that you have a harder enemy and you're just fighting and fighting and you get that meter down, then you can do the brain crush and it is so cool. Sometimes you can do it on multiple enemies at once. There are just so many options with the combat, but the whole time you're going to feel super cool. And even if you're not super familiar with this style of gameplay, the game will still make you feel like you're doing good. And at least in the earlier levels, while it's still easy, you'll be feeling so awesome even if you haven't fully grasped the combat yet. Really, really cool. All right. I wish I could talk more about the combat, but if we ever go into our full review, I'll definitely talk about that. This is just kind of my initial impressions. So I'll move on. We'll talk about the story. Obviously, I can't go super in-depth because I haven't covered much of the story yet, and I've only played from one perspective. But the story is very enjoyable, at least from a presentation standpoint. The cutscenes are a little different than you might expect, and depending on how you feel about it, they might feel cheap or... Cool. It just depends on what you what you think. They are very stylized, so sometimes characters will be walking around, and then they'll freeze frame, and the little cutouts will just like shrink down, and another cutout will pop up, and then it will unfreeze, and it'll show them keep walking. It's very stylized, similar to something like Persona 5's presentation, where it has like that very just like hyper stylized presentation. Um. But it kind of reminds me a little bit of also the presentation in story scenes of Fire Emblem Three Houses, where you had the character models combined with the character portraits. It's uh, similar to that, but that's not quite the same. So you'd have to kind of see it for yourself. Maybe you go look up a cutscene or something if you want to see what that's like. I have some people have said that it's like a huge thing they just can't stand. So if you're going to be playing this like 80 hour game, you might want to look that up first. Another thing to note, unfortunately, at least in just in my case, and I haven't heard anyone else say anything about this online, but just in my case, playing it on the Xbox One, 
uh, all the cutscenes were very, very laggy for me. And I tried uninstalling and reinstalling and trying it again, and they were still very laggy. And it was the same in the demo version, so I'm not sure what the issue is there. I think that's probably just a side effect of playing it on the last gen hardware, but it doesn't seem like it should be a very demanding game. And it seems odd that the battles go on without a hitch, but then the cutscenes are the ones that get so dragged down by poor performance. It can be really distracting though in a story scene to have everything just not really moving that fast. And a lot of times it'll have to struggle to load and character lines will be uh, delayed. It can be a little bit jarring, so that's been unfortunate. Hopefully it gets patched out, and I really hope other players are discovering this because I have been going insane trying to look online and see if anyone else is experiencing this. I have to assume most people are playing it on next-gen hardware at this point, but uh, I just haven't gotten motivated to buy a Series X or a Series S yet because most games are still running on the one. And I just built a computer, so I was like, I don't really want to go buy another console right now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, anyway, that's just something to be aware of if you're planning on picking up the console version on either the Xbox One or possibly PS4. I can't say because, again, I haven't been able to find anyone that else has experienced this, unfortunately. But hopefully, if you do pick it up, you won't experience that same issue. And maybe they'll patch it out if it's an issue with a lot of people. I'm not sure. We'll see. But moving on from that, story's good, presentation's good, characters are likable. There are opportunities between missions to get to know the characters, and this is a very, very Fire Emblem type thing, where if you get to know characters, you'll do better with them in battle, you'll earn new abilities, and it's optional. You don't have to do it. You can choose not to, but doing it will get to know the characters better. You'll get to see optional stories, and you can even do optional side missions that allow you to grow with the characters and get new resources and of course level up your own character so there are a lot of optional side modes but i think it's really cool if you like to get into a world and really get to know the characters like in the fire emblem games or persona i'm drawing a lot of comparisons uh then you'll enjoy it you'll enjoy getting to know them you'll enjoy taking on all the side content you could push this from an 80 hour game easily up to like a 100 hour game or more definitely depending on how much of it you want to see, and if you decide to play both of the stories. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that I wanted to cover from my initial thoughts? I don't think so. We talked about presentation, we talked about the battling, and we talked about the story. And that's really all there is to this game. Uh, just battling and story and battling and story. And it can actually be a little bit overwhelming in the introduction. There's a lot of story and battling just back and forth, but as time goes on, story tends to be cut down a little bit and you get to do a lot longer battles in between with no tutorials interrupting you so just get through that initial couple of hours and it's a great time after that but yeah i hope that you guys will check out scarlet nexus it's a lot of fun and uh if you ha hadn't gotten the chance to play any of the games like uh, the dynasty warrior games or even like i heard astral chain was getting a lot of comparisons drawn to it on the switch uh well this is Definitely a good opportunity to jump into the hack and slash genre and also the RPG genre. And if you do like those games, then this is a great opportunity to play another game like that. But I would recommend it to you, at least from my time with it so far. And hopefully I'll get to update you guys with my full review in a couple of months or maybe sooner, depending on how long it takes me to beat the game. But if you're interested in that, why don't you leave a comment below saying you'd be interested in hearing the full review later on down the road. And the more motivation I have, the faster I can get through it, right? But yeah, just let us know if you've been playing Scarlet Nexus or if it looks interesting to you. What platform are you playing it on? And all that jazz. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you want to keep the conversation going with us, you can always reach out to us in our Discord server. Every time a new member joins in, we have a celebration because we love new members and we just love hanging out with you guys. Be sure and follow our Twitter account also for news and gameplay on the latest releases. And until next time, guys, the most important thing you can do is always stay one up. We'll see you next time.